Hey, welcome to the Medio Scientific channel. I am Nick Hawks. Today, we're gonna to be walking you through how to add a sensor to your Medio Scientific ChirpStack console. Before we get there, make sure that you hit the like and subscribe buttons. Those really help the channel. They also help you. Every time I drop a new lesson, you'll be the first one to know about it. Also, if you know anyone who could use this information, please share it with them. Okay, so here we are in our ChirpStack console. Uh, we're up in the dashboard right now. I got nothing going on. We're going to need three things before we even get started. Uh, I'm assuming you already have a device profile in there and you've got a, an application, in this case, the soil moisture sensor. But before we get in there, we're gonna need three other things that are important and that come with every sensor. In fact, before I even talk about what, um, what those three things are, let's give you a look at what the sensors look like. So this is the sensor. This is a soil moisture sensor. Um, it is in its housing right now, so you can pull it out of the housing. There it is, got the little bug net around it. This is the sensor that we're gonna be dealing with today. It can be any sensor, it doesn't really matter um, which one it is. Okay, so that is the sensor. When you get a sensor, every sensor will come with three long and complicated numbers. Those are the dev EUI, the app EUI, and the app key. Now you may be wondering what EUI stands for. EUI is Extended Unique Identifier. Uh, and when you know that, you get nerd points. Um, I've actually never heard anyone ever say Extended Unique Identifier. Everybody just says EUI. Those three things are what you need in order to add the device to your console and to let everything know wherever it hears it that this is your device. So you're gonna need those. Usually they come in the box or the company will send you an Excel file or whatever it is the company you buy the sensor from will send you an Excel file. Today, I'm gonna go ahead and set them from within ChirpStack. You can generate your own own um, EUI, and in this case, I'll show you how to use the app EUI and then the app key. So we're going to cruise down. We've seen device profiles. We're going to go down to applications. I'm going to choose the application, and this one, we've already set this up, showed you how to do that in another video, and we're going to go over to add device. Now, when we add the device, the naming con convention that I'm going to use is the name of the device, um, the last four of the dev EUI and the position. So I'm gonna leave that there for now, just uh, we can go back in and fill them in later. Every device has a bunch of um, information you can put with it. I'm just gonna put this in the description. And you can see that this stuff here is just stuff that's important to me. You can use whatever is important to you. I'm gonna put this in. The location is gonna be the avocado tree in the backyard. I got a little avocado tree that um, is important to me to keep you know, the soil nice and moist for. So that's where I'm gonna put it up. I'm gonna set it up uh, June, actually it's gonna be 12th not the 10th. And then this is what I'm gonna use it for. This is just making kind of notes in general. Whatever is useful for you, go ahead and use that. On the dev EUI side, this is typically where you would copy and paste in your dev EUI. Don't bother typing them in, that's a big pain in the ass. Um, every manufacturer, every reputable manufacturer that sends you any device will send you the dev EUI, the app EUI, and the app key. So in this case, what I'm gonna go ahead and do, and it has, is have the MetSci ChirpStack console, go ahead and generate that. I'm gonna copy that, so copy that sucker there, and I'm gonna paste it into a Google Sheet that I keep for all of my devices. Along the bottom, I got a bunch of different tabs for what those devices are. In uh, ChirpStack, funnily enough, the app UI is always gonna be 16 zeros for the, the LoRaWAN um, that we're using. So I'm gonna leave that there, and then we are gonna go ahead and go down to device profiles. Remember, we've set these up already, so this is the Maker Fabs one hour. On tags, we don't need to mess with anything right there now. We'll go into some more complex settings later. On variables, you do need to add a variable called app underscore EUI, and then go ahead and take the app EUI that you've got. In my case, it's gonna be these 16 zeros. Uh, command C, and cruise back here, Command V, paste them in, and I'm gonna go ahead and submit this device. Once I've submitted, the next screen I see is the application key. Now again, you should have an application key. Most of them come with them. This particular device is uh, configurable, very fancy. And I'm gonna go ahead and add an application key here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at that. I'm gonna copy that and put it into my app key field over here. So this just means if I come back, if I lose the credentials on this device, if whatever, if, 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 um, now I kind of know what's going on. I'm gonna put my glasses on so I can see the tiny little letters here. This is CB58. So I'm gonna go back. Uh, first, I'm gonna hit submit here. So now this uh, 
thing is ready to be received by the Medio Scientific Chirp Stack console. So before you mess with the device, typically you want to kind of set it up in console so that console is ready when you turn the device on. I'm going to go back to configuration. Remember, we hadn't really named this yet. So I'm going to call this um, avocado tree, oops, soil moisture. And then I'll paste in those last four so that I can identify this. And then in this case, I'm just gonna put the position is avocado tree. Now there's only one avocado tree in my backyard, so that makes a lot of sense for me. And now we've got this thing, device is updated. And the next step is to go ahead and power on the device and wait to see what happens up here. While we're waiting for that, I'll go ahead and power it on in the background is we've got a bunch of different tabs across the top here. Now we've seen dashboard here, receive, this is whether or not we've received packets, RSSI, that's the received signal strength indicator, SNR is signal noise ratio. These are all radio terms that let you know how loud and clear your signal is coming in, frequency, all the rest of that stuff. Once this thing starts popping, we'll see these graphs start to populate. Over in configuration, we've already seen this, we've done the tags and the variables, we got those things in there. In OTAA keys, we've seen that as well. That's the application key we saw. In activation, once this is uh, changed, um, or once, once it's activated, we'll see a bunch of stuff here. And then Q, this is for sending information on what's called a, a downlink. So we're sending it down from the console down to the, uh, the device. And then events and LoRaWAN frames. Now, events and frames are something that are pretty confusing people. And what we're gonna do is walk you through the difference between them. So an event is information that is in the packet. So that's from coming from the sensor um, out and that, that is information that's in the packet. So it's kind of information about the sensor. A frame can have events in it and a frame will also contain information about the hotspot or gateway that it's sending onto the MetSci console. So the event is what is uh, the information off the sensor and the frame is both the sensor uh, events and additional frame information. So that's what's going on there. Okay, I'm gonna pause this thing for a second while we wait for this guy to activate and I'll come back when it's activated. Okay, after a couple minutes, this is what popped up over in events. Uh, been messing around with a couple things, but uh, yeah, you'll see the status, the battery level, all that crap will come through. We've got a join right here. If you noticed before, this was uh, 383 data credits. Now it's at 379, so four data credits to do all of this stuff. You can go through and check all of these different things. Remember, events are what comes from the sensor and frames are what come from the gateway and include events. So we've got a join request saying, uh, the sensor's asking to join and uh, join accept saying like, yeah, come on in. So there's the gateway ID of, uh, of what's going on. So you can read all that stuff in here. That is pretty straightforward. That's um, what you need to do when you are adding a device onto the Medio Scientific console. Uh, once again, make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, that really helps the channel and uh, helps you help me produce more super cool videos like this. We're going down the line making a bunch more on devices to add. So like, subscribe, rock and roll. I'll see you next time. I'm out.